In today's tutorial, we are going to learn about how to utilize FileMaker so that you can turn data from a list field like this and automatically populate it and generate an official document like on the right side here. We're going to be learning about three things. First, how to set up a layout so that it's a printer friendly. Second, we are going to learn about how to use a merge view so that you can populate your data within the paragraph seamlessly. And lastly, we are going to learn how to use scripts and buttons so that you can click onto one of the record, click a button, and it automatically prints this official document for you. Coming up. Hey guys, how is it going? My name is Sunny Chu, and this channel is all about creating beginner friendly FileMaker tutorials so that you can apply it to your business and automate the work that you have in it. Now, this file that I'm opening, you can download it from the link in the description down below so that you can follow along while I'm going through this tutorial. Now, let me quickly introduce this uh, database. This is a very simple uh, customer order database with uh, the order ID, the customer name, the product that they're buying, the warranty date, their address and phone number. And the first thing we want to do is that we want to create a layout to hold the form. So we're going to go to File, Manage and Layout. We're going to press on this new button here. And in here, we want to choose a for, it's for a computer, and then we want to choose the type as a form. Let's just name it uh, the printout. Click finish. And now we are we have a blank, we have a brand new uh, blank layout here. The first thing that we want to do is that we want to uh, make it suitable for printing on white paper as well as uh, make it printer friendly. So first step, we are going to um, just hide the header, pull it up, and then hide the footer. So we only have the body in here. And the next step, we want to make it so that it's uh, transparent or white. So we're going to click on this body part and then open the inspector. You can open the inspector by going view, inspector, or you can click on control I. When you click on the body here, it's highlighted and then click on uh, appearance on the inspector. Choose the color as white so that um, you don't waste any ink when you're printing. And next step, we want to set up so that the size is matching with the paper that you're using. And for this tutorial, we are going to reference using the A4 paper size. And A4 paper size is um, eight and a half inch in width and 11 inch in height. So we're gonna pull this down to 11 inch. Oh, and in case you're wondering, this um, ruler thing here, we can um, access this by clicking view and then there should be a ruler in here that you can show and hide the ruler. Now we're going to go to do a little bit more fine tuning on the printing. We are going to click on this pencil button here and we have arrived at the layout setup dialog. What we want to do is to click on the third tab, printing, click on use fixed page margin. Well, I usually prefer this to um, be all zero so that it doesn't add in any additional margin for my printing so that everything is under my control within the layout. Click OK and then we are all set. The next thing we want to do is to start setting up the layout. So first I want to put the logo on here and also company information on the top right here. So I've already prepared some uh, basic information, so I'm just going to drag this logo right here. And then I am also going to be copying and pasting some prepared material in here. And all these are fixed information, so um, it's not much to be changed. Okay, now I have the basic um, logo and the header. I'm going to move on to creating the populating information in here. So to drag out a few, 
we are going to press um, Control K. This field picker dialog will come out, so I'm just going to click and select all of them. Make sure it's um, aligning vertically and then with a left side with a label. So I drag this out and then we, uh, we have all the fields ready in here. And then just double check order ID, customer name, customer phone and address. Oh, it's, it should be customer name here, not customer first. And we're going to make this align to the left side. And then we're going to click on the inspector. And there's a tab called Arrange and Align. We're going to align everything to the left so that it's a very neat and tidy and fit on the left side here. We're going to drag this field a little bit longer so it looks uh, more tidy and matching with the top here. And the next step, we want to create uh, terms and conditional on the bottom here. So I'm going to copy my uh, default terms and condition from this text document here. And I'm going to be pasting this into this part like this. Now I'm just going to control A and select everything and choose black so that, so that everything uh, is more obvious on the paper. And if we zoom in here right now, you will notice that I have created a very um, bad version of uh, terms and conditions. And so <clears throat> we have some underlining area in here. This is where I want to be placing in the customer information. So how do I populate the data into this paragraph here? The most straightforward way, the most <clears throat> obvious way is to use the field picker, control K, and maybe just drag in the customer name and then place it right on top of this area of the text here. But um, as you notice that the, there will be sizing issues and there will also be a um, different length in the customer's name and which the format doesn't look too good. So we don't want to do that. What we want to do instead is to double click into this, highlight this area. We're going to use a function called merge view. We're going to click on insert on the top and then click on merge view and then click on the customer name here. So once I click on this, what happened is it created a special code. Once we're in the browse mode, it will automatically populate the customer name into this area within the text here. So let's try it in the browse mode. Press Control B. And by signing this contract, I, Nicole Cunningham. And then we press on next record. It changed to Tammy McCoy. So it's working. So we're going to go back to layout mode, Control L. And then we're going to add additional um, information here. So in here, we want to add the expired, expiry date. So we're going to double click on this highlight this, insert, merge field, and choose the warranty date. And then to fix my something device. So the device is what they brought. So we're going to highlight this and do insert, merge field, product that they brought. And let's try it in browse mode. Now if I try it in uh, browse mode, it's uh, working quite well. and the data are being automatically populated to the terms and conditions. So it saves me a lot of time in changing it every time I have a different customer. And then finally, we want to add some sort of um, signing area in here, this part here. So we're going to go to layout mode. We are going to click on the line icon, drag out and create a line for people to sign on. Right now, the line is a little bit um, light in color. So we're going to click on to the black color here so that it's more obvious. And then we are going to want to uh, underneath the signing area. We want to show the name of who is there and also the date when this document was generated. For the name, we want the customer's name to be populated here. So again, we are going to use merge field. And this time I'm going to press Control M is the hotkey for using merge view. Click onto the customer name, drag this open a little bit. And then we want the date to be 
always be today, which is um, the current day. So how do we do that? We are going to click on insert again, and there is something called date symbol. We are going to click onto that, and it automatically create another special character um, icon here. So I may maybe I just zoom in a little bit. This time, instead of using a direction arrow, it used a curly bracket, and it marked the current date. And it's a special way of communicating to FileMaker that you want this to be today's date that this document is generated. So if we um, just copy this and control click so that we're duplicating this and then we're going to change this to the our company so there's one place for us to sign and one place for the customer to sign and since the company name is going to stay the same I'm just going to copy from the top here go back down a little bit and then just paste it here and let's see what happens if we do browse mode now as you can see, once we're in browse mode, these names will be automatically populated and the date will always be today. So today is the 11th of uh, April. So we are almost there. The last step, we want to be really lazy and add in a signature icon in here so we don't have to do the signing every time. So I have already prepared a fake signature here. Oops. Sorry, we have to go back to layout mode first and drag on the fake signature and make the size smaller a little bit. And then when we place it here, it's overlapping the other things and this is not what we want. So we're going to right click onto this, arrange and send to back so that everything on top is uh, showing. And then we're going to zoom out a little bit maybe tune up the alignment slightly so that it's aligning better and like this like this and then maybe give this a title order summary contract I like this make the size bigger and make it a black color again and there you have it, a very simple official document. We are now going to press on Control B to go to browse mode and we have a very um, sort of professional and neat document being created. Now that I have this layout being set up, the last step is to create a button from the list view page so that I can click onto it and it automatically generates a printout or PDF. So we're gonna go back to order layout into this list view layout first make the size a little bit bigger so it's easier to read and then go to layout mode we're gonna add a button here click onto the button here and drag and just um, you can use whatever icon or name you want I'm just gonna use a printer icon and double click onto this and call it print and then we want to start by going into creating a script for this button so we're going to click on script and script workspace this is where we'll be doing some simple script for our buttons in the future and click on new script to create a script it's a fairly simple process you want to first determine what you're going to do as a real person first. If we want to, um, if we go back to layout and go to control B, we want to, when we click onto this, let's say one of the contact, and when we click print, we want it to first go to the printout layout. And then the next step, we want to print the thing. So it's a very simple two step process. So we're going to go back and go to script workspace go back to a new script here and we're gonna give it a name so the two step will be first go to the print layout and then second print so these two are just the command so that you can understand a bit better behind the logic of the script 
So first, go to layout. This is the actual script. We want to choose, click this to choose. And we're going to choose printout, which is the layout that we have that is designed for the printing. And then the next step, we want to do the printing. So we're going to press P-R-I-N-T. We're going to print. And in here, we have some setup we need to do beforehand. So we click onto this uh, gear icon right next to the print command and click on specify. And we have a dialog box being showed up. We want to um, set up and make sure a few things is in place. So first we want to make sure the print is uh, on printing the current record. And by default, if you're using new to FileMaker, you should be on a record being browsed. And the reason that we don't want it to be a record being browsed is that if, if you're browsing 20 records, it's going to print 20 of them at the same time, which um, you might, if you're printing, you might kill a lot of trees or even worse, if you're generating to a PDF and send to a customer, you might be sending 20 customers information to that one customer, which is going to be quite a disaster. And so make sure this is on a print current record. You can also select the printer here, but uh, since um, I'm demoing this to you, I'm just gonna set the printer to um, print to PDF. And then you can also click onto the property to make sure you are printing the right size. So in here, I notice that I'm not printing the size I want. Currently it's setting as the size uh, letter, which is uh, more applicable if you are living in the US area. But for my country, it's uh, A4. And then we are going to make sure this is a portrait and OK. So once we set everything up, the next time you do printing, then it will automatically adjust the print setup to match this one. And we're going to save this, Control S or click File, Save Script. We are going to um, go to Layout Mode again. Click onto this, right click, Button Setup. We're going to click onto Action and assign the script that we have to this button here. So I'm going to click on Action, Perform Script, and find the script that I just created. Now if I click on the control B, now I can test out my script. I'm going to click on a William Parker and then click print. Now you will notice that um, it automatically takes me to the other layout and ask me if I want to print. So I am just going to click OK. And it now asks me where do I want to save it to. I'm just going to save this to the desktop, PDF sample and click save and there you have it if I go to the PDF right now I will have a very um, simple very neat PDF printout that is for William Parker the in our database and everything here is in place so there you have it a very simple um, tutorial in how you can turn the list of data and then creating a um, very simple official document that is printable or savable in PDFs. And I've got a question for you guys. So after recording this, I think this is likely going to be a 20 minutes plus video. I'm just wondering, do you prefer the shorter type like I have previously or do you prefer a longer, more in-depth video? Let me know in the comments down below. And if you're new to my videos, this channel is all about creating um, beginner-friendly FileMaker tutorials so that you can apply it to your business and automate your workflows. I will be posting regularly, so if you want to see more and don't want to miss out, remember to hit the subscribe button. Thanks for watching, and I will see you on the next video.